Hello and welcome. This is Fireworks. Today we examine the issues in Nigeria's transport sector as we take on who should know. Here's an idea of who my guest is. We'll be right back. Thank you for staying tuned. I am Bukola Samuel Wemimo. My guest today is the Honorable Minister for Transportation in Nigeria, His Excellency, Mr. Rotimi Amechi. Thank you for your time, sir. My pleasure. Uh, let's start uh, this way. It is heartening to know that um, the Abuja Kaduna rail project has kicked off um, and it's begun to contribute to growing the economy, especially. Uh, in Kaduna State. But there are challenges uh, in that uh, area and people in Kaduna are saying that it's in a relatively remote area where development is slow. Uh, I, I wonder how much of supervision your ministry has taken on recently to <coughs> examine the impact of that, uh, of you know, the takeoff of the Abuja Kaduna rail line uh, in that uh, area. The, the, the station at Rigasa is not the Kaduna station. Is a Rigasa is a small station for the small community. Unfortunately, the big station will come when we start constructing from Ibadan to Kano. Because what you have from Kaduna to Abuja is a spore. Just a, a, a spore for those who the, the rail is running from Lagos to Kano. So if there are people from Lagos to Kano who want to go to Abuja, when they get to Kaduna, they, they, they then board the rail line going to Kaduna and going to Abuja I mean. So they stop not at Rigasa, they stop at the train station in uh, Kaduna and then take the train going to Kaduna, uh, Abuja. And you will pass Rigasa as one. Uh, we, uh, it happened yesterday that we did that analysis in the, the ministry. We tried to analyze to people who came to ask that uh, the Rigasa station is being run down and the volume of passengers is higher than it. I said, yes, Rigasa station is a small station meant for the small community. When we build that big station that will take 1,000 to 2,000 persons, then you will not see, currently the population of Rigasa station is for about 15 temples. But is there a main, uh, the main station. terminal in the, the Kaduna metropolis itself? There is, there is, but it's not yet under, it's not being constructed because it will be constructed when we are doing the Lagos Canal. Because Lagos Canal will pass through Kaduna. So it's an ongoing process? Of course. But are you also aware of the reports of corruption that is bedeviling activities I've heard, I've heard at the Rigasa station? I've heard all that. My response to it is, first, it, is, it, it may be true um, or may not be true. Why would you say it may be true or may not be true? The, the whole, the number of coaches we have, about four coaches, multiplied by 30. And one out of the four, just one that has first class. So if 30 persons come to buy tickets at, at uh, what's it called, you do. In one hour, if you sold 30 tickets, when the rest come, they say uh, people are hawking tickets and all that. But it's okay, we have ordered for investigation. But my personal investigation, uh, by the way, I've spoken to locals in that community, and they say that uh, when they go to pick their friends who are coming from Abuja and other parts of the country who are applying that route via rail, that they have to pay uh, money to the tune of 5,000 naira, whereas what really they should pay is 1,000 naira for tickets. The ticket is about uh, 1,500 for first class. It depends on what class they apply. And then for the economy, it's about 1,000 naira. So um, the EFCC, will it be in order for the EFCC to begin to look into uh, uh, activities of operations of uh, no officials at the terminals? No problem. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't mind that. Now, uh, while passenger train uh, service is in order, how soon will Nigerians begin to enjoy, you know, cargo train services until the first is we are rehabilitating the narrow gauge we are going into a we are already having a conversation with GE to concession the narrow gauge when that happens not only will there be passenger activities in that narrow gauge there will also be uh, most importantly the freight activities and the passenger activities you must know it will take you nearly two days or one day plus to get to Kano while for the freight, it took it about the same period because they are going to do about 80 kilometers per hour. And hopefully we should start by October. Mm. Now, um, Nigeria is the perhaps 
one of the few countries where you still have articulated vehicles who are applying the routes, and this is common on the, on the streets of Lagos. In uh, the beginning of this year alone, and this figure is the FIC figure, by the way, 49 of 1,193 road accidents which occurred from the start of this year alone was caused by articulated vehicles. How worrying is this for you as Transport Minister? Yeah, well, unfortunately, I'm not the Minister for Works. But again, in terms of road accidents, that falls within the Ministry of Transportation. You see, we're at the stage of construction. They need to put down the rules, the speed limits, what you do to, for which you should be taken to court. We need to begin to enforce the law and prosecute those who disobey uh, traffic regulations. You see, any country where laws are not enforced, any country where people are not being sent to prison for breaking the laws or punished for breaking the laws, that country will never progress. That's the problem we have. People are not being punished for breaking the law. So other people are, will break the law. But it shows that somebody is not doing his job. Well, uh, that's what I'm just saying here now. I'm saying that somebody needs to punish those who are, who are breaking the law. The, the Ministry of Transport does not have the responsibility to punish those people. We're only to set the rules. We make the policies when it comes to uh, land transportation or mass transit. Implementation of those land transportation rules in, are, are located with the, in the states, not at the national. Well, we're still talking about your government, Honourable Minister. You know, year after year, lives of people have been lost my worry that needlessly. Think, my worry is that uh, TVC should know that we're in a federal government. We have limitations. I can't go to Lagos now and say, after making rules about speed, even speed limit, I don't know, I'm not sure if it's Minister of Transport. Let's assume that Minister of Transport makes a speed limit regulation. I cannot enforce it because uh, transportation is, is on the concurrent list and there are our responsibilities to make rules which we make from time to time. And then the responsibility of the, of the state government is to enforce those rules and to also pass their own laws as it pertains to uh, road transportation. Now, let's move to ports. Ports workers say that uh, they're yet to feel the impact of your leadership at the ports as they complain that the situation of uh, things at the terminals are uh, deplorable. What are, what are their complaints? They, they complain that uh, the jobs are not coming in as often what, as they used jobs? to, off, off dock jobs, and how then the congestion, the, uh, the congestion at the ports. How would they come in when the portation has slowed down? We are gradually coming out of the economic recession. Even you can feel the fact that we are coming out of economic recession. Do you feel the same way you were feeling eight months ago? That's, that's debatable. I'm the price you index of consumer goods in the that's market a, that's, that's, where, that's where everybody goes. Has not, that's have, where, well, has not changed. That's where everybody goes And yet the government tells us that we, we're out of recession. We didn't say we're out. We say we're gradually coming out of recession. Gradually coming out of recession. That's where everybody goes. Everybody goes to the... In, in, the only indices you check for is food items. But uh, as how last, often do as you, last do you year, visit the markets uh, can to, you, to purchase? I, I sell. I sell. I'm a chicken farmer. I'm losing money because as of last year, we were making 290 naira per day old chick. But now when, I'm selling at 50. When it, when it goes off you know, the poultry farms, the price changes no, because no, of no, cost no, of no. transportation. No, 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 no. Yeah, that's where we're coming to. That's how, another day I was going to speak to you. That you see, one of the reasons for which there is this price difference, differences in the market is the cost of transportation. And government is doing quite a lot to improve on, on transportation. You, now, when I spoke to you, I had desperate to, yeah, to revive the, the narrow gauge. It's not because we want to go and stand at the rail and say, oh, see, we revived narrow gauge. It's because we know that immediately you revive, you revive nar the narrow gauge, and they are able to convey farm produce to the market, and that will crash the cost of food items. We are doing everything desperately to ensure that price of food comes up, because that's the only ground on which you are assessing the government. You're not assessing the government in other areas. You're not assessing the government in terms of good roads that are now being put in place and being fixed. You're not assessing the government now that the government is making an effort to ensure that if you're coming from Lagos, as they claim you're coming from, that you should be able to board the train and get here in six hours by mm. train. We can at, talk at a lot cost. more about the cost of transportation uh, impacting on the price of food uh, before it gets to the final consumer, but uh, we'll spend a lot of time on that. Uh, let's go back to ports. And earlier I mentioned uh, port congestion. Let's look specifically at the Apapa port. The infrastructure around that area is a major source of concern for stakeholders what, doing what business. What infrastructure are you talking about? The, 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 the bad road in that yeah, area. Exactly. Now that contractors are mobilizing to site, that's when the complaint is most is loudest, right? I have always said to Nigerians, please be patient. We, we know you are in pains. 
we, you see, the difference between us and the previous government is that we are a government where the ministers live with the people. There are no big houses. My colleagues, some of my colleagues live in Guarempa. I hope you know where Guarempa is. Some of my colleagues live in Apo. There is no mansion like Ministers Hill. There is no Maitama. Very few persons live in Kama. Among the ministers can afford to rent Maitama. Our house rent per year is 4 million naira. And you're not, it's not paid in bulk. It's paid on pro rata basis, on month, monthly basis. So we know, we know the pains you're feeling. And so when it comes to Apapa, I've gone there as Minister for Transportation. I've gone there. That's why you saw that there are three parties are contributing to ensure that, that MPA is putting money. It's not that it's putting to do that. It's the federal government through Minister of Works. But to make sure that that happens speedily, we are, we are able to contribute. And that shows you that government is serious about ensuring that we take away the pains that our people are currently bearing. Mm. Uh, still on ports, and just before we go for a break, um, about port congestion specifically, I know that um, Port Harcourt, the port in Port Harcourt, is one that is featuring prominently in the restructuring narrative. And uh, based on that, uh, the agitators are saying that uh, they have been marginalized in the scheme of things and the inactivity at the port in Port Harcourt is evidence of the marginalization they have experienced over the years. Who is in that? Um, the, the, the Biafra agitators. And I want you to comment on that. But that will be after the break. You're watching fireworks. Today I'm taking on the Minister for Transportation, uh, Honorable Rotimi Amechi. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Thank you for staying tuned to Fireworks. If you've been following our discourse in the last half hour, we've been talking with the Minister for Transportation, Right Honorable Rotimi Amechi, and we've been looking at issues in the transport sector from uh, railways to roads and to the ports. Uh, now we're looking at uh, the port in uh, the Port Harcourt, uh, uh, in Port Harcourt, the capital of River State, and the inactivity at that port. Um, how much of attention is government paying on it, uh, paying to the port in Port Harcourt, such that uh, there can be vibrance in other ports in other parts of the country away <coughs> from the Apapa port in Lagos? You know I'm from River State. Absolutely. You know that the capital, capital of River State is Port Harcourt. You know the government of River State. Do you think I'll be here and if there's anything I need to do to ensure that the Port Harcourt Seaport works, I will refuse to do it? Tell those militants, first and foremost, I don't believe in Biafra. Uh, tell those militants that are agitating that first they need to stop agitation. It is part of the agitation that is causing the crisis. You have crime, you have people being beheaded, and you think how many people will import from there? The port is ready. If you bring your ship, it will, it will take your ship and offload and take, take out the, the goods that you have brought. But you were governor for eight years in River State. To see, what extent do you, you see, take responsibility you see, for the insecurity the killing, the killing, in River State? Did you hear about the killings in River State when I was there? Did you hear anybody was beheaded when I was governor? Apart from the first few months when I, when I came in and there was kidnapping here and there, one or two assassinations. By my second year, that all has stopped. Did you hear, did you hear that? Okay, but that's not the issue, because I don't want to politicize the conversation. Let's, discuss, let's dwell with the issue of uh, uh, transportation. When it is time for campaign, then we'll address those issues. We'll ask to know the number of persons that have been beheaded, and why they were beheaded, and who was behind the beheading. So the first, the governor has to address insecurity, before we can talk about that. Mm, but, but and by the way, Potakot is not part of Biafra. But shouldn't politicians, well, politicians should be held responsi responsible for the heated uh, situation in River State? Are you not a politician? So who hold you responsible? I'm, I'm a journalist. Uh, then I'm, not, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a literary critic. If we go by your qualification, I'm a literary critic. You want me to be specific? Yes. What about uh, you know, the tension between you and the current governor? You see, let me tell you, as a governor, by experience, the responsibility of, of government, you take an oath that I swear, that's the only thing for which you can be impeached for. You can't be impeached for not doing rules, water or light. That's inefficiency, right? The oath you take out of office, I swear that I will uphold lives and properties. The day you cannot, you're not able to uphold lives and property, you either resign or the state assembly should impeach you because those are impeachable offenses. When I was governor, nobody ever accused me of killing anybody. After leaving office as governor, I have never been accused of killing anybody. Currently, they're accusing the current governor of killing people. If he doesn't, if he's not killing people, but what I realize that if he's not killing people, his government is not reacting to that, and that the voices are known to him. Some of them are appointed 
um, to, hold, to public offices. They are council chairmen, they are uh, known killers are holding public offices. In my time, you don't even greet me. If, if you're no murderer, and that's not because but, of government policy. But the policy. accusations are back and forth. Yeah. What? As the PDP makes, uh, as the APC makes accusations of uh, the, the against the PDP perpetrating violence, especially during the elections in River State, uh, the PDP makes the same uh, against the the All Progressives Congress. They should show us one person from PDP that has been killed during an election. Then we'll show them. If they show us one, we we'll show them fifty of APC members. This, their, their usual strategy is they kill, they kill. A week the election, they will behead like five APC people, but the rest will run. Then they will have a fifth day. <laughs> that's, the usual, that's the usual strategy. So, how did the, your relationship with uh, the current governor, your former chief of staff, degenerate to this extent? I thought we agreed that this interview is about transportation. We'll talk about uh, uh, rivers politics inevitably. When we are able, you see, I, I think we have been unfair to the governor of River State. In what I say, we have been unfair to him. It is wrong to assess him now. Let him have his three years to four years. They will compare how much he has received to how much I have received. Right? And compare what he has done to what I have done. If you want to do two years comparison, or three years now, he's doing his third year. This, uh, towards the end of this year, he should begin to compare his government. Then I will say to him, by my first tenure, I had built, out of the 150 health centers I had built, I had built close to 90. Completed and hired medical doctors. But my first term, second to third year, Before we begin I had to hired, I have, you, started, you started politics, I didn't okay. want to go there. But my third year in government, I had hired two, the first 200 doctors. I met 200 doctors in the employment of River State. By the time I left, there were 600, meaning I hired 400. Right? Now, what the governor does, and I, and I don't want, that's what I say, you don't bring me into reverse politics until it's, until it's right. What the governor does hmm, is to shout corruption, 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 corruption. He takes away the argument from the issues. He goes to forge documents, he bribes people here and there. That's what he does. Now, but let's see, even go to the issue of corruption. The governor is 10 times richer than I am. He was my chief of staff. You know, the one thing about reverse politics is that literally all of them served under me in one way or the other. So I have documents on them. As chief of staff, I have documents on him. Right? I removed him as chief of staff for corruption. And I said that to reverse people. And they said, why didn't you prosecute? But I said, under, under good luck. Uh, but before things turn sour, and th th that's, that's what I want, to, want us to concentrate on. Him. But before things turn sour, uh, uh, you recommend him for Correct me if I'm wrong now. You recommended him for appointment in the Jonathan government. Jonathan, President Jonathan called me, and I have all, all, all the respect for President Jonathan. He's the president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. He was the president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. By God's grace, God anointed him as president. If you refuse to respect that office and him, then you are not a man. But he called me as president and said to me, look, look at the, your nominee for the position of a minister. And I said, Sir, I didn't know there was this report. I'm confused. But I don't seem to have any other candidate to replace him. And he said, okay, I'll use him for six months. But six months turned to four years because he was looking for an attack dog. So if President Jonathan called me as governor of the party and showed me an EFCC report on him, an NSSS report on him, there were two reports, EFCC and NSSS, saying he was corrupt. Whether I begged for him or not, he, as president, who was fighting corruption, according to him, had the right to say, I mentioned, no, I will not take this man. So when, the, when that same man gets up and says, corruption, corruption, you ask him how. But if you removed him from office on uh, grounds of corruption, uh, he also accuses you of squandering River State funds to the tune of 30 billion naira. He's the governor, and when he he's became the governor, governor of, he's the governor of River State, he should go to court. And when he became you governor, know what, by the for, way. You know by now, the judiciary is. I don't know what to say about the judiciary in the city and all that, but let him go to court. You know, if, if I were him, if I were him, I would do things differently. When I was governor, the same man came to me to say to me, I should set up a panel against Dr. Dele. Why? That Dr. Dele was trying to remove us in court. And I told him that Dr. Dele was my benefactor. I don't bite the finger that me because you never that finger will go back 
and that's what is called gratitude. That man doesn't know, know the word gratitude. If, if you look at him, that's why I shouldn't be speaking about him. Everybody say, don't talk about him, don't talk about him. I shouldn't be talking about him. But if you look at the man you're talking about, you know that he's not together. He, he seems to be under an influence. Whatever influence it is, I don't know. As governor of River State, I never smoked. Till today, from birth, I never smoked. From birth, I never have taken alcohol. But go and do a research on my, on my governor. And, and when he took office, just upon your exit, he led the newsmen around the government house and talked about how the state house had been plundered. You believe that? You believe I've been governor, I've been speaker for eight years. I didn't plunder or take the official residence of, of the speaker, which others were doing. I left it. As governor, as governor, it's when I'm living as governor that I will carry chairs, table, spoon. What am I doing with them? I can't afford it. First, the Lord said River State Government will build a house for me, and they built one. River, the Lord said River State Government will furnish the house, and the house was furnished. So what am I doing with those things? Well, when two elephants fight, the I'm boss not an elephant. suffers. My name is Roti <laughs> <laughs> Well, When two giants fight, really, I'm the boss suffers. I, first, Let's talk about uh, the cost see, of first, the Cold War. See, first and foremost, especially on the people foremost, of River State. First and foremost, again, I think that we're being unfair to uh, Governor Wiki. We should allow him his time to govern. I agree, that, I agree that he doesn't want to govern. No. I hope you get that clearly. The man doesn't want to govern. Now, before we, we, we exit the sour relationship between you and the current governor, uh, the award that um, he extended to you, which you rejected, would it be an olive branch that would have, uh, you know, so mended fences? Is that, is, that, is, that, is that how you take olive branch? Eh? <laughs> Somebody puts poison in the olive branch and gives you, you swallow it. I'll tell your husband when I see him next time. <laughs> now, but let, let's look at it. It doesn't really matter whether there's an olive branch but, or not. What matter was, what matter that is you're the, taking what, a bit, a bit no, too what, far. What, what matter was the principle? A week before that, you just called me a thief. So do you give thieves award? There's something wrong with your character. The characterization of the individual you're talking about is flawed. I can't look at you and call you a beauty. And then I'm giving you an award for being the ugliest woman on earth. But then political watchers say, the next moment they see you at an, what informal, about, what about at an informal event, you're exchanging pleasantries never, and you're laughing. Never, never. I'm a bit too principled. If I say you're a liar, you're a liar. I can't call you a... Because I want something from you, I say, oh, this is the best woman that has come on earth. He tells truth to everybody, including God. No. We should begin now to hold on to principles. He knows I'm a principled man. The gentleman you're talking about knows I'm a principled man. But indeed, you know, you're making me break the rules. My, my publicist insists I should stop talking about him. Now, I don't know what led us to this. My, my publicist insists I should talk, stop talking about him, but it's not an issue. The relationship between public office holders is important. Oh, yeah. It changes the course of Gary. No, be, be, because, because it, it impacts, the it impacts of positively or negatively on, on, the, on the followership. No, it's not true. It's not true, what's that? You see, I'm not that, that kind of politician who keeps my list with John because John knows you and I'm quarreling with John. No, bloody what? Like I said, the disagreement is on principles. One of those principles I showed when he gave me an award, that you can't wake up and say, this man is a thief. And then they say the thief should come and take an award for being be one of the well-behaved men on earth. Then I won't take the award because I, by assessment, I'm not... I'm not well behaved. I was about to exit this issue, but you know, imagine if it were a deputy governor and a governor, you know, that had this type of relationship. That's why I said it impacts positively or negatively on the governed. You know, you know, I, I'm, I'm enjoying what you're. I mean, I'm, I'm laughing. I'm, I'm laughing. I'm looking at my state and I'm laughing. You know, when you sit on in public office, they, be, they will also all manner of criticism. Now and they, now they were comp then they were comparing apple with oranges. Now they're comparing orange with orange. You know that. Now you can say, oh, when Governor Mechi was here, the crime rate was low as compared to now that this man is there. Now you can say, when Governor Mechi was here, he built 500 primary schools and the school fee, there were no school fees. It was free for everybody to go to, whether you're from River State or from uh, other parts of Nigeria, it was free. Once you're living in River State and you're paying your taxes. We did not know who was Yoruba. And the governor came for us and said, oh, why he removed uh, why he stopped the scholarship that I granted to over 3,000 persons to go and study abroad is because on the list we are Niger State, Patu State. Uh, that means he doesn't like Northerners. But meanwhile, we did not go to the north to take people. It is Northerners that live in River State. 
Now, other issues. The, the nation's uh, airport still in a deplorable situation please, and some of them please. some of them are the mere take off, take off points no the only places we have the places we have we have problem now uh, glaring problem is lagos airport the rest airports we are beginning to manage to build to them the minister of state for aviation is doing a lot to rehabilitate most of the airports that we inherited and the Lagos Airport, very soon, he will announce the government policy on the New York, very, very soon. What about the inactivity at, at most of state airports? Again, it's it, it, viable. That is viability, economic viability of any airport. It, it's, airports are not built for people to just fly. If airports are built but for... But some states are considering building some. But I criticized it. You didn't hear me when I went to Ogun State and I was, uh, the governor confronted me and talked about this airport. I said, no, what determines an airport is the economic challenges or economic realities that are available in that state. If, you're, if, 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 if there's production in your state and there's a need to transport what you produce, then you have an airport. Mm. Would you look them in the face and also talk about the criticism that they're just phantom projects so that uh, no, I, I money can I, be embezzled? I, I, please, please stop this. I don't like people insulting governors. You just assume that we just sit down, any governor sit down there and just take money. So, embezzlement. When the governor thinks about an airport, it's not because he's looking at what uh, how, to, how to steal money. He believes that, yes, the demand may be low, but tomorrow the demand could be high. And at that point, when it comes to tomorrow, then the cost of constructing, of constructing that airport will be very high. Well, the debate on that continues. And before we exit, uh, well, we'll wrap up this interview. You got 243 billion naira in the 2017 budget for the transport sector. Now, all of these concerns that we have uh, outlined, rehabilitation of airport, uh, development of uh, cargo-powered trains, and all of that, how much of it can it cover? No, you can't. That's, that's what, it, what the large chunk of that for, uh, budget was for uh, uh, catapult funding. Uh, it take take uh, the Lagos to Kano train. It's 8.3 billion naira. Multiply it by three. So Nigerians, how soon should Nigerians expect a bigger boost in the transport service sector? We believe that by 2018 December we should be able to commission the Lagos Ibadan Railway. We believe that by 2018. June, July, we should be able to commission the Tibet to Wari Railway. We believe that before the end of 2018, we will have commenced construction of the Badan to Kano, and possibly the Lagos to Calabar, and possibly the Potakot to Meduguri. Possibly, because we are looking for loans. If we get the loans, we will start construction. We believe that latest in October, we will start the gradual rehabilitation of the narrow gauge, and they will start running. We are expecting about 20. Uh, locomotives and over 200. But the Minister for Finance has said that Nigeria cannot afford to continue to borrow. Yeah, they say so, but uh, that is uh, maybe in other areas. But in terms of uh, this necessary, n the much needed, uh, uh, what they call it, infrastructure, you, ca you can't abandon it. If you don't construct them now, and you say you construct them in 20 years, the price will double. You just imagine how much they awarded the contract for Lagos later, Bay. don't worry. It's three times that price now if not more than that. All right, we want to thank you very much, uh, Honorable Minister for Transportation. Don't go back to uh, reverse politics again. <laughs> I don't want to. <laughs> That's how it's been on fireworks today. Uh, of course, we've gotten an insight into government's efforts at uh, revamping uh, the transport sector and, of course, uh, a deeper insight into the politics in river states. Join me again same time next week when I bring you another incisive edition of the program. I am Bukola Samuel Wemimo. Bye for now.